Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Open your Bible in Ephesians chapter 2. Say amen with you there. Amen. In you he made alive, who were dead and trespasses, and sins. Amen. Hallelujah. And we see it here the word of God. That we were a spiritual dead. Amen? Amen. And in Christ, we have resurrection life. Amen? And completely transformed. Amen? That's what happened when we were saved. We were dead in our trespasses and our sins, spiritual dead people. But when we came to Jesus, we were saved. We became alive unto God, a new creature, with new nature, Amen. saved by the grace of God, completely transformed. Amen. All things passed away, everything became new, new creation, new person. That's, that's you and me. Yeah. Amen. And all the Christians around the world, new creature. New nation. Amen? Amen. It's something you're going to celebrate, celebrate that. The human cry have been saved by grace. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 2. And will you want to walk according to the course of this world once before Christ, before you were saved. Amen of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the son of disobedience. Satan is the prince of this world. Amen. He is the prince of this system, the world system, the, this natural realm. And Satan has influence in the whole world. And every affair, everything is has hands on it. <laughs> Politics uh, and business and the arts, every part. Even he has infiltrated himself in the church. Amen. Okay. He has the, he has influence even in Christian they haven't crucified the flesh. Okay. Jesus called the rulers of this world in John. Okay. Here in Ephesians, Paul is calling the prince, the prince of the earth, that means of this extent of this world. Amen. But remember, when we were saved, what happened? Jesus take away the sin. He take away the power of Satan over us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue reading here in Ephesians uh, verse 3, in chapter 2, verse 3. Among whom also we also once conducted ourselves in the love of our flesh. You see? Fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Okay. The person that is not born again, they walk by the mind, whatever, by the emotions. They do whatever comes to their mind, to their emotion. See, that's what Paul says here. It's saying here that. Among whom also we, we, all once conducted ourselves, once, that means before you became Christian. That's right. That's what God's prayer from us, that we not continue living like 
we haven't been saved. Mm -hmm. Walking in what? In, in the love of the flesh, fulfilling a desire of the flesh and of the mind. Mm -hmm. See, that's where we had Galatians. We're talking about the walk in the spirit not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why? He's telling us because you are a new creature. Walk by the spirit, not by the flesh, but the old nature. Nah, no more. Go by your new nature. Amen. Okay? The children of wrath, children of wrath are those who choose to now obey God. Okay? But some Christian walking are as though they haven't been saved. And that's what Paul wrote this. This word for Christian. Let's continue reading. Um, let's, therefore, by God, who is enriched, who is rich in mercy, because of His great love, with which He loved us. Remember, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. God. Hallelujah, love the whole world. Amen? The God of us is great love, speaking here in, in, in Ephesians. Love, though, for God so loved the world. Amen? Remember John 3, 16? Hallelujah, verse 5. Even when we were, we were dead in trespasses, Neos made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Amen? The by grace. Hallelujah. By His grace, we are saved. Amen? Amen? By His grace. By His grace, we are saved and secure in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus went to the cross. By the grace of God. Okay, that was the grace of God for the world. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to save you through my son. I want to save my son to the cross to suffer, to pay the penalty that you deserve. He's going to go to the cross. He's going to love the world. I love every human being. But they have to pay. Someone had to pay for your sins. That's going to be my son. I will send him. Okay? And after he go to the cross, he pay for all the sin. But each person has to come to Jesus. Amen. To receive that forgiveness of sin. And to receive that grace for salvation. Amen. Okay? It's only to Christ. Every person has to come to him. To be saved. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I have to be clear. Okay? And not no way to be safe. Okay. Oh, I want to be a good person and not do nothing wrong and be safe. No, you only get safe to Christ. After that, you continue walking in goodness, holiness, because you're a new creation. Amen? You are a new nature now. You are a citizen of heaven. Amen? You are sons and daughters of God. To cry Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. Verse 6. And raised, and raised us up together. Hallelujah. And made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God raised us from what well, God raised us uh, from the dead, the death to our sin. The same way that, that Jesus raised from the dead, the physical death, He raised us from our spiritual death. You see, Amen. we went to when Jesus went to the cross. We went to the cross. Okay, even you don't went physical to the cross, but He went to the cross because He was put on the cross. Then when we receive Christ, that's what happened. And then God raised us together. 
is Christ. And see the offs. We Christ. In heavenly places. You see? That, that's a lot. That means you're not more a, a mere man, a mere woman walking in this in, in the air. You are a supernatural person. Amen. A spiritual person. Yes. Saved by grace. Amen. Okay? You're a new creature. You're a citizen of heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are sit together. God sits all together in Christ Jesus. Now we walk in partnership with God in Christ to do His will here in this earth. Amen? We are partnered with God because God continues doing His work here in this earth through us. Amen? God continues saving people through us. That's why we have to continue preaching the good news, the gospel, to get more people saved. Amen. Because God so loved the world, God continues loving the world, and the will of God is that never, that no one perish. That's the will of God. That's right. His will haven't changed. Okay. His will haven't changed for humanity. And it's through Christ the people get saved. Amen. Those things haven't changed. And never is going to change. Hallelujah. Never, never, never. Hallelujah. Never. Those things are going to change. Salvation all is through Christ. Amen. And God continues doing His work to His people. Amen. Reaching others, calling others to come to the kingdom through us. Verse 7 that in, that in the ages to come, He might show the seedling riches, hallelujah, of His grace. Thank you for His grace. Thank you for your grace, God. And His Kindness taught us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He continued showing his riches, his grace. How did God continue showing those things? Through, through believers. Okay? Amen. Through believers. Yeah. <laughs> through us. You know, we, we're walking. And working in partnership with God and Christ uh -huh. to do His will and this earth. Yes. To God can accomplish His perfect will to save men. Amen. To show His mercy and grace to men, extending His grace to men. That's what that's what happened when we preach in the gospel to an unbeliever. God is, is showing His grace to people. Come. And be saved. Yes. Come and be saved from the wrath that's coming against the sons of disobedience. The, the gospel is not condemnation, the gospel is salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Christ. Verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. He has a gift, you cannot buy it. That's right. He has a gift, you cannot buy it. 
It's a gift of God sometimes, but someone has to believe. You have to put faith in what God said. You have to put the faith in Christ to be saved. Yeah. You cannot buy it. That's right. You cannot sell it. But you can receive that gift of grace to faith in Christ. Amen? Amen. Faith allows to receive the grace to be saved. So when someone puts faith in Christ, that person gets saved. That's what we got saved. If we don't got saved another way, we got saved when we put our faith in the gospel, then what will we hear? The gospel salvation. We have the gospel salvation and we believe in the gospel salvation. Right? And we say, oh yes, I believe that. The Christ is the Lord. The Christ is the Son of God. And the, the Christ paid for my sin and the cross. You see? And because we believe, we have faith in that. We got saved. Yes. We receive that gift of grace. Okay? Through faith. And Christ. Amen. Remember, Jesus broke grace and truth. In the Old Testament, God worked through his mercy with those people. He deal with mercy a lot. But in this dispensation that we live in, they brought Jesus Christ to this world. He extends his grace to us. God extends his grace to us in this dispensation. It's the dispensation of grace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 9 says, Not of words, lest anyone should boast. Okay, remember? We cannot boast about anything. Amen. We cannot say, if you are for my power, anything, even the guy using you, you cannot boast. You cannot boast anything. You cannot. Amen. No boasting, because everything God did. <laughs> no boasting. Because we don't get saved by any work. Remember, you cannot pay it for us. We cannot buy it and forgive by grace through faith. Yes. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. No boasting. But you know the believer is supposed to be the, the humblest person in this world. Amen. Because we receive everything we receive from God was by his grace. And everything we receive from God from that point on till we get saved, we have to have faith. Amen? No boasting. No pride. Verse 10. For we are his warm and cheap. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. We got prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. You see, after we get saved, we know that we, we got saved not because of the work that we did, okay? Not by work, not by the grace of God. But after we get saved, God has a, a spell to do good work Amen. after we get saved. We don't get saved by works, but after we get saved, we're supposed to do good work. Amen. Amen? He read this in. For we are, we are his woman sheep. Okay? Amen? Woman sheep is something that have, have been made good. Okay? 
God, remember in the Old Testament when God made everything and God said, it is good. Everything God made is good. Okay? So he made us good. <laughs> everything for salvation is good. Okay? The way you choose us to be saved is good through the cross. Amen? And then after that, the believer has to do good works. Amen. Okay? The one good work is this here, I said. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared. Who prepared those good works? God. Yeah. God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God prepared. God prepared for us to do good work. Okay? Amen. Help He have prepared. We should do it. What God wants you to do, do it. You see? The commercial. If God tell you to do it, just do it. Just do it. Go and do it. You have prepared for you. You have prepared a word for me, for you. To do it. And good things. Amen. Okay? Why God did that? Because we are his workmanship. You see? He prepared in a way that we can do what he called us to do. <laughs> You see, that's workmanship. He prepared. He made us. He made us. He himself made us. And because he made us, he prepared those good work. That we are we are custom made to do what God called us to do. Amen. Amen. Custom made. You see, everything is made for, for a specific job, right? Amen? The video camera is made to record videos. <laughs> custom made for that. The believer is custom made <laughs> to do the will of God. Amen. So we cannot say, no, Father, I cannot do it. Yes, I cannot do this. No, you can't. Why? Because he made you and he's going to help you Amen. to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I'm, I'm amazed with the believers, you know. And that's good. They, they claim every good thing is from God. Oh, the promise of God. Find you. If you really believe that this promise that the Bible recorded for you, and you believe it's good because we receive it by faith. Believe it. Hey, but receive the other. The part that you have to obey. Amen. The parts that you have to do the will of God. Get it all. The promise and the duty of the believers. Come on. To obey God. To do His will. Get it all. I have, I have brought Jesus. He got it all. He got the power, but he got the, the will to do God's will to go to the cross. And in, in Jesus said it many times when he walked in this earth, I'm here to do the will of my Father. He just now was going to do a miracle, signs and wonder and preaching and, you know, looking for people to say, oh, wow, Jesus is great. No, no, no. We are focused to do the will of the Father. Amen. We see people running in the church, up, they, I'm a prophet, I'm a apostle, I'm looking at. This is one attention. But what is the part of the obedience? Yeah, let's see all. Amen. That's true faith. You believe everything God said. Amen? Amen. A new creation or a new creature, we have the potential to do good work. As in us. Yeah. As in us. Amen? And send you. And send me. Don't deny the power of God in you to obey, to do good work. And send you. The work has tell you, go and do it. Because send you. And the more wonderful thing they got when you walk on them, He helping you. He walking with you. Remember when He sent the disciples? And they, and, and, and they, what the word of God said, that God was working with them. 
accompanying them with signs and wonders. God was doing those signs and wonders because they were in obedience to do those good work. So we do the same. God is accompanying us. It's in partnership with us, doing the good work with us. We're not doing ourselves, remember. It's God, Amen. the kingdom, the whole kingdom, helping us. God gives power. God is and his resources helping us. That's what that's why nobody can say, God cannot do that. I cannot do what you're calling me to do. No believer has the right to say, I cannot. No. Let's, let's read this. Uh, let's go to British land. You there? Amen. Let's read the whole chapter. Amen. Therefore, remember, because what we read, what we, I say before, therefore remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, before Christ, remember, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. You know, what was the circumcision made by hands? What the Hebrew people. And the circumcision in the uncircumcised were the Gentiles. Okay? Amen? The two groups. Verse 12 that at the time you were without Christ. That was us. One time we were without Christ. Before Christ. No hope. The, at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the common world of Israel and a stranger from the covenants of promise. Okay, we were out of the covenant of God, out of any promise. Having no hope and without God in the world. We don't have no God. Who was our God? This world system. And then we came to Christ. But now, in Christ Jesus, you see, we have to see the difference. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were, were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You see, that's where we have to celebrate. Because the sacrifice of Christ, now we're not alien from God. We're not enemy of God. Now we are known by God. And we have some sin dollars of God. Because the sacrifice of Christ. Amen. Amen. Verse 14. For he himself is our peace, Christ, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. You see, now one Hebrews and, and, and Gentile are one in Christ, not different. Okay? The same promise the Hebrew have in God, we have the same because Christ. Okay? They are better than us. We are better than them. We are one in Christ. In Christ. But everyone, even if you born as a youth, you have to come to Christ. Like us. Because we receive all the promise of God through Christ. All the promise of God. A yes and a man and Christ. Remember that. Who received the promise of God? Those who are in Christ. Because in Christ that the promise of God is yes and a man. It's clear that Amen. having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the love of commandments contained in ordinance so as to create in himself one new man 
from the two that's making peace. There's one, one family in Christ, okay? The whole world becomes one family in Christ, okay? But in Christ, remember, only the family of God has those who are born again. Amen. One. It's one family. That's what the church called it, brother and sister. Yeah. Hey, brother and hey, sister. We are one family in Christ. Amen. The believers. The believers. Hallelujah. Verse 16. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross. Again, again. One. The where? Through the cross. Through the cross. You see? Through the cross. We become one family through the cross. Amen. Okay. The, the cross, what the cross mean for the believers, for the Christians? The there. Our Father put our sins in our trespasses and in enmity against Him. That's what the cross empty. Amen. Jesus is not in the cross on the cross. Jesus is not on the cross. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. That means you are not enemy with God, you in Christ. Amen. Okay. The whole world is enemy of God. And to break that, they have to come to Christ. Amen. Amen? Amen. That's what he said here. Thereby putting to death the enmity. But what, what happened? He said, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross. Thereby putting to death the enmity. Okay? We can say, the world is the enemy of God. <laughs> And to pray that they have to come to Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 17. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. Okay, listen. The gospel is peace. Amen. The gospel is love. Yeah. The gospel is grace. Hallelujah. I don't know why people are against the gospel. The gospel is good. There's nobody to preach. Who can it be saved then? How the prophet, how they couldn't be safe. There's no one to preach it. <laughs> Somebody had to preach it. Somebody had to show who Christ did in the cross. And why. He said, for through him we both have access by one spirit the Spirit to the Father. You see? Jesus is the door Amen. to go to the Father. Jesus is the door for salvation. Jesus is the door for all the promises of God. Amen. And we have we have many promises in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Many. And we can receive that through Christ. Amen. Amen. Have faith. Now, therefore, you are no longer a stranger and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. 
You see, now you are family. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you are family. Amen. Hallelujah. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone and the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. That's the church. See? The, the foundations of this body of Christ and the gospel that Jesus brought to us. Amen. Okay. And the apostle continued preaching. That's what the apostles, they, they were mature that they that the doctrine continue the same. Amen. And we have to do the same. Make sure the, the sound doctrine is maintained. Don't mixture that with anything else. Because we see in the church to my mixture of things. The world, the kingdom, to, uh, they are mixed together. If this mixture is not good. That's right. Okay. Talking in verse 21, you know, we know that the Christ is the head of the church and the cornerstone to the foundation of everything. It's in him and whom the whole building being filled together. That means need put it together, the whole building it grows into a holy temple in the Lord. The church is holy. Amen. The body of Christ is holy. Amen. Be holy because I am holy, save the Lord. You cannot take away the holiness of the body of Christ, the church, because that is, if you take away the holiness, that's not the, the body of Christ any longer. And that what happened in many congregations, they take away the holiness. The, some they already take Christ out. Verse 22, in whom you also are being built together, you see, for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. You see, we are the temple of God. The temple of God holy, who temple you are. Amen. Okay, every believer is the temple of God. And who dwell in the temple? God, by the spirit dwelling in us. You see, that's what you have to be holy. <laughs> already, God made you holy already. He separated you. That's what God did. He set us apart for himself. Amen? That you are the temple of God. Who dwells in the temple of God? God himself by the Spirit. You see, you are the temple of God. The temple of God is holy. The temple you are. Amen. You are the temple. God dwells in you. Amen. By the Spirit. The body of the temple, the building, is, is inhabited by God through the Holy Spirit. You see, all this thing is to salvation. You see. We are no longer ourselves. Living in this world for ourselves. We're living here with a purpose. Amen. What is the purpose to be safe? To walk in obedience to God. Expanding the kingdom. To bring more sons and daughters into salvation. Amen. Not for us, not even for ourselves. That's right. She, the one who is safe, don't live for himself any longer. Amen. Not for the one who saved him or her. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. 